Are you nostalgic for a simpler time? A time where controllers didn't have so many buttons. A time where games weren't so overly complicated by so many plot devices. Yeah. Me too. I miss my NES. Hi. <laughs> I'm Bill, and I absolutely love old video games. But I didn't have anyone to play with. So I decided to start the Super Switch Club. That's right, a podcast dedicated to discussing and reliving the nostalgia of retro video games that are also on the Nintendo Online Virtual Library. Each week, my friends and I will discuss games from the NES to the SNES. Games like Super Mario World, Kirby's Dream Land 3, Donkey Kong Country, The Legend of Zelda, Super Metroid, Balloon Fight, Punch Out! A Link to the Past, F-Zero, and so much more. The Super Switch Club is a Podcasters Assemble style show from the We Can Make This Work, probably, podcast network, where we'll be replaying and discussing some of our favorite video games from our childhood. So join us on the Super Switch Club, where you can relive the nostalgia of tearing your hair out over an NES game that loves to troll the shit out of you. Best of all, you can too. Head on over to probablywork.com slash Super Switch Club now to learn more. Hello and welcome once again to an episode of The Coordinate and sorry, my apologies this is a little bit late. I've had an unbelievably busy work week. It's been quite literally crazy but I don't want to bore you guys with the semantics of all the crap that I do at work. We're here to talk about Attack on Titan and oh boy have we got an episode for you. I, To be honest with you, I started watching this episode and I was like... Oh, I'm just gonna have I'm gonna have a fight episode to talk about, aren't I? Where just you know things happen, but no, 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 no. Oh no! Oh fuck no! I have got an absolute belter of an episode for you. Oh Tyler, you clever, clever boy, you you clever little son of a bitch. Okay, I I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah, yeah been waiting finally i now understand everything but i also understand nothing because this doesn't explain shit but shit happens man oh this is so exciting so we open up the episode you know let's let's picture the scene shall we shall we you know everyone's fighting about uh you've got pk pk power pk fire uh she's up on top of the wall with a big cannon on the back there's odm gear people flying around her like ants and flies you know and she's swatting them down really cool shit um uh, Gilliard, Porco, Porco Rosso, he's on the floor. Erin smacks him on the nape of his neck, you know, bashes him down. He's still having a fight with Armin. Uh, not Armin, the other one. <laughs> oh, oh, God. The guy, the Armoured Titan. <laughs> That's it. Armoured, not Armin. Um, and yeah, Armin and Mikasa, they're sort of trying to decide, oh, how do we help Erin? What's going on? What do we do first? You've got Yelena, Yelanda, Yelanda, whatever her name is, sitting on top of a sitting on top of a turret with her legs crossed, looking a bit like Jesus, sort of, you know, spacing out. More like Buddha, really. Um, and then most importantly, Eren trying to make his way towards his brother, who's on the floor from the big cannon thing in his neck. The other guy is on top of... The armor Titan's on top of him, holding him down. Porco's there. Gabby's. And then yeah, he's... Uh, it's just so much is going on. Yeah, but what you got to remember, Zeke's on the floor. Reiner is holding down Erin. And, um, yeah, what's with, actually, there's a big moment where uh, Reiner, Reiner touches Gilead and there's a little spark of electricity. Then he starts seeing him, like bits of his thing. It's like, what is this weird Titan power where they can share memories? It's really, it's, it's pretty cool, but, you know, also really weird. <laughs> so, yeah, so Gilead, yeah, so lots of fighting going on, basically. And Erin trying to get over to Zeke. And then Zeke starts to get up. And, oh, my God, Zeke's still alive, people. He is still alive. And Arian really wants to reach out to him. But suddenly, Colt and motherfucking Falco. Yeah, no, sorry, not, not the Austrian rap star. Amadeus, Amadeus. Uh, the little kid Falco with his little, you know, he's got his funny little headband on. Um, they turn up and finally reveal to Zeke, you can't do this. You know, 
I want to protect my brother, shouts Colt at Zeke. And it's just like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Falco's like, oh, yeah, I, I drunk some of your spinal fluid. I don't want to get into a Titan. Don't scream, don't scream. And Zeke's just like, yeah, sorry, I've got shit to do. Ah! And screams his head off. And fuck me, man. <laughs> Falco turns into a really tall Titan. <laughs> um, and obviously, obviously abnormal because he's quite fast as well. Um, but yeah, and he's just like the actual transformation because his brother just holds him close, really tight, and he just literally burns his brother to death as part of the thing. And of course, Gabby's also turned up at this point as well to help out, uh, and she's about as helpful as a fucking brick sandwich. Uh, <laughs> excuse my language. Uh, so yeah, poor old Colt, he's he's burnt himself to death, and uh, yeah, and Falco has turned into a Titan as well as pretty much most of the um, uh, Paradisian soldiers within Shugantina have all turned into huge titans and they're just eating Malian soldiers left, right and centre. It's glorious. It's like back to the early days of Attack on Titan where people were just being slaughtered. But it's not... I have to admit, I have to admit these later seasons have kind of lost the shockingness of it all. I know we kind of expect it, but I feel like they've really toned down a lot of the graphic violence in this. I don't know why. Like... They went so balls out in the early seasons with the shocking violence of it all. And now it just doesn't really seem like much. But anyway, yeah, you've got Falco and his long neck. Yep, didn't know Falco had a long neck, but he does when he's in Titan form. And he runs over and starts trying to eat Reiner. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to nosh Reiner right down. Um, uh, uh, because Zeke told him to. <laughs> you know, Zeke's, Zeke's into some kinky shit, people. Um, and yeah, it's just absolutely uh, just bonkersness going on. But you know, Reiner's the armored titan, and Erin's pretty fucked. So he's holding down Erin and, and Falco. But then Erin managed to get up. He's trying to get away. He's trying to get him. And then Falco starts biting the nape of Reiner's neck. Yeah, he's trying to eat him. And then, ah, uh, then fucking PK Fire and Commander, what's his name? Crisis or Crisis, whatever his name is. He shoots another thing at Zeke and actually kills his titan form. You know, and we. Like the assumption is obviously that Zeke's dead, but you know, you know, you'd have to be about as thick as two short planks to think he's dead at this point. Uh, so he's definitely not dead. Um, but his Titan form is at this point. Mikasa and Armin turn up at PK and start using the uh, the old Thunder Spears and their old techniques. And the really cool bit where Mikasa does that weird like backwards entrance and slices two of the soldiers in half. Again, it all kind of fades to black at that point, and you see like the blood splatter. They're trying to be like. They're trying to be Pulp Fiction-y, I feel like, you know, make it really, like, look cool. But I just want to see those two guards' heads, like, fall off in, like, two different directions. And, like, Mika's is just so fucking cool. She also looks very mumsy these these days, you know. I think she's cut her hair short, and I think they made the hips a bit wider. But, yeah, she's, she's looking very mumsy. I think she's looking very hot, you know. I'll give her that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, you know, obviously, obviously, Erin is taken by Tyler. Tyler, he's all yours, okay. But, yeah, I'll, I'll have Mika, so it's all right. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, it's just there's just all this sort of crazy shit going on, man. And Reiner is sitting there going, ah, oh, I think maybe I should just release the armored bit on the back of my neck so that Falco can eat me and take the armored Titan because he should be inheriting it anyway. At which point, fucking Porco Rosso starts walking over in human form, being like, I haven't got enough energy to transform. I'm tired. Somebody eat me. And Falco, motherfucking Falco, and he's really long neck. Just runs over and starts noshing down on poor old Gilead. <laughs> so yeah, so Falco is going to become the next. Uh, I forget what's called now. Jaw Titan. That's it. <laughs> Much to um, Reiner's dismay. Um, and then this is where it all starts to happen, people. So he's chewing down on Gilead. Reiner then tries to smash Erin's face in. Erin turns everything into crystal to trap, essentially trap Reiner where he is. And then he runs out the back of the thing in human form, running over to Zeke, who is just lying on the floor, being like, Aaron, I'm glad you spotted me. This point, I was just like, you know, he's he's not going to make it somehow. Something's going to get in the way. And I remembered, fuck, Gabby is standing there. I remembered this bit. You know, there's a whole point where Reiner's trying to reach out and grab Erin, but some of the other... Colt and uh, uh, Jean-Luc Picard turn up with the Thunder Spears and knock him over. I'm thinking, oh no, he's he's running straight into Gabby. And literally, you can see her. She's picked up Colt's rifle. She takes aim. Everything goes into slow motion time. And she fucking blows Erin's head clean off his neck. 
Now, I've just had a complaint about how unshocking this has been. This was great. Oh, my God, his head completely decapitates and spins around. There's blood and shit coming out of him. And it's just, oh, it is glorious. I was shocked. And obviously, I'm not Gabby's biggest fan as it is. She's a fucking douchebag. But, oh, my God, that was so good. Oh, my God. Yeah, man, I loved it. And, like... Oh, we we got like 10 episodes left or some shit and they fucking killed off Erin. Oh my God. Yes. Smother me in Titan glory. This was so good. So shocking. So shocking. But I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And then next up, we're kind of treated to this like, you know, a a flashback of um, Zeke and Erin talking at the hospital back in Marley Town. Um, And uh, yeah, it's just like Erin agreeing to the euthanasia project. And he actually brings a tear to Zeke's eye. With his uh, little speech. But the only way to save people from this is to release them from the fucking hellhole. It's just being an Eldian. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling that. Feeling that, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah. But as it turns out, uh, Gabby was not quite accurate enough. We've got this really cool scene where everyone's kind of paused. And I like it when it goes through um, Connie and, um, and Jean. Because... You go through their, like, um, uh, you can see all their wires, and it goes through the middle. I really like the way they they, uh, they animated that. And then suddenly you get this fucking, uh, oh, God, sorry about my language this week, guys. <laughs> you get this, um, uh, what was it, fear and loathing in Las Vegas moment where <laughs> uh, Zeke catches the head of Erin, and everything sort of starts spinning around and doing all this weird stuff. And then suddenly Erin wakes up, in like a distant far off plane with the golden crystal shining tree in the background and Zeke's there chains around his necks holding him to the ground and he tells Erin this is the coordinate an attack on titan podcast welcome Erin welcome in (laughs) oh oh Tyler you 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 bloody genius you said the coordinate be important and I'm pretty sure they mentioned the coordinate in like season two or something like the first time Erin shits his pants with the founding titan but yeah it's just well done, mate. Well fucking done. I'm. You chose a banger of a name for the podcast. Very, very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, he kind of uh, Zeke's sitting there. His hair's all long. His beard's long. He's looking very, very Jesus esque. Uh, and he's just like, yeah, years have passed. Why I've been waiting for you to wake up. We managed to, you know, Gabby blew your head off, but you know, we managed to make contact while you were still conscious and before you passed on. And so we are here. Ymir's here, and um, yeah, it's time, Erin, to make. Go tell Ymir to make us all euthanized. And Erin's just like, fuck you, douchebag. I'm not going along with that plan. That's fucking crazy. Uh, and at which point, little girl Ymir, um, who was obviously the girl that we saw in um, in the flashback back at the end of season two. Uh, season four, oh, what the, the fucking vi- the part one of season fucking final season. Fuck, 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 fuck. Girl, someone, uh, Tyler, I hope you're not going to have to bleep out all these F words. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. I've had too much, too much lovely fucking coffee. Hang on, let me slip down. Mmm. Ah, deliciousness. Um, yeah, so, they, you know, he feels like he's at the end. But Ymir just walks straight past Erin. Just like, yeah, fuck you, bye. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Wingy. Ah! Oh, shit. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, my God, please, 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 please bleep that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm off my rocker today. Um, yeah, walk straight past Erin. Doesn't call him the C-word. Um, and uh, good old Zeke just stands up. All the chains falls off him. Goes, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> screw you. She only listens to people with royal blood. Have you not realised this yet? This is why we've got to touch each other. Uh, uh, not not like that. You'll, you'll get into trouble like Prince Andrew. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, they've just got to bang heads or something. Um, and then they can use the power together. Because Ymir, the founder... The founding titan only listens to those of royal blood. So she won't listen to Erin. She will only listen to Zeke. Oh my god, Erin. Well, how did you not figure this out 20 years ago? You have the founding titan. You've only been able to use the founding titans when you come into contact with someone of royal blood. Did you honestly think coming into contact with Zeke would mean you could use the titan power and not Zeke? The only reason you got to use it last time was because the person you touched was a fucking titan. You moron, Erin! Come on, use your brain. Dim, dimwit, absolute dimwit. <laughs> um, so yeah, Zeke has 
uh, yeah, he's just done everyone. But I just, I loved it. I loved this episode. You know, Zeke, you know, puts Arian in his place. Arian finally comes out as being Arian of old that we knew. You know, I d- we still don't know what Arian was going to do. You know, he didn't actually reveal what he was going to try and do with the Falling Titan power. But obviously he wasn't going to euthanize people because that's fucking crazy. Sorry. <laughs> um, but Zeke is determined that him and Arian are going to do this together, even if he has to um, just, you know, basically drag Arian along and force him to his will. You know, much like the first king with the Founding Titan did to every single Eldian. Yeah. Uh, you talk about history repeating yourself, Zeke. You are the definition of this very thing happening. <laughs> um but yeah, I loved it. I loved the whole bit with like being on this like far plane existence of the coordinate, the big crystal tree, all the sand around. Ymir can apparently make anything out of sand, but for some bonkers reasons, will only listen to people of royal blood. Because, um, you know, I like the band Royal Blood as much as the next people, but, you know, only their first album was really good. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, a few little plot holes there at the end, but oh my God, what a great episode. Gabby, you were the biggest dick ever. Ever. Yeah, I, I predicted it and you was. You've killed our great main character, Erin. So you've you you you've succeeded being the greatest douchebag of Titan history. And you do have some good contenders there as well, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, just, ah, oh, what a joy. What absolute joy this episode was. Oh, so it was a bloody, bloody great episode this week. I really enjoyed it. So what's going on next week, people? Next week is going to be... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, episode seventy nine. That's it. <laughs> uh, memories of something. Memories of Falsetta, <laughs> or is that a yeast game? <laughs> nah, it's just memories of the future. So look forward to that with Tyler. And um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> just just be careful, guys, uh, because if you don't turn into a Titan, you may get your head blown off by a little g- Gabby gobshite. <laughs> Alrighty, anyway, guys. Apologies for my language this week. I'll see you all on the flip side. Love you all. Bye. This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at ProbablyWork for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called ProbablyWork.com.